right, here we are, Kai Lamy, the holy grail of South African motorsport with, I tell you, an aficionado of racing, Ricky Giannocaro. It's awesome to have all the new cars out on show and, and just to be here, the vibe is going to be excellent, I reckon. We came to get some time with the car around here. You know, I wanted to test my new baby out here, so I jumped at the opportunity. You know, we found these cars in the Czech Republic and uh, we brought them through from the Czech Republic. Um, they're born and bred race cars. It's a genuine Lamborghini Super Trofeo based on a GT3 spec and we're Italian so we've got to support the Italian brand. It is bespoke, I mean you can see it's got all of the roll cage inside, it's a proper GT3 car. Why is it Ferdinand? If you remember Ferdinand the bull was the quiet bull sitting out in the meadow sniffing the, the flowers and uh, you know he gets stung by a bee and he becomes aggressive and becomes the ultimate fighting machine. There's a motto, it says made to love, built to fight. It's a lovable car, everyone loves a Lambo and I want to take the fight to everyone else. So here we go, here's Ferdinand. Wow, she is beautiful. What a lot of people don't realize is the vast variety of vehicles we actually have here. You know, a lot of guys say, oh, South African motorsport, uh, they're probably just driving like a Golf and all that. But the guys don't realize the, the vehicles that are here. I mean, we've got Lambos, we've got the Aston, we've got Porsches, we've got Bentleys, Bentleys we've got everything. I mean, I would personally myself, not just as a race driver, but as a fan, I'd like to see international racing here. Let's bring it back to South Africa. So I'm just sitting there thinking, I'm looking at you. I mean, you're like physically in very good shape, you know. This has taken years <laughs> to develop, and, but you train every single day. Yeah, I train every single day. It's, uh, it's become a lifestyle. Right? Right. Like everybody else, when you leave school, you mm -hmm. kind of like let yourself go. And I've kind of like got extremely overweight. Uh, you know, I, I topped out at 134 kilos. No and, way. Yeah, no, serious. And then just one day, ah, it goes back many years. My uncle said to me like this, he's like, seriously, are you not uncomfortable? And I was like, yeah, no, I am. And then something like this triggered and the next day I started running, cycling, uh, I do squash, you know, we race off-road bikes, we race cars, if it's got wheels, we race it. We you've got a family, you've got children, but you do ensure that you have time for yourself to number one, free up your brain and get your body into shape. You've got to have family time, family time is important and uh, you know, there's a place and time for everything. On a weekend, I like to do it as a family. So yes, I might not have my wife and my children there, but I'm with family. I'll bring my brothers, my cousins, brother, sorry, cousins and friends. You know, we go out as a group, we go as a family and we enjoy our days of riding together. I've managed to make it work and it seems to work quite well. When you look at you now, go back three years, you had a very, very hectic accident. Tell us a little bit about it. So uh, we headed out to uh, a little place called Rhino Park and you know, I raced quads all my life prior to this and um, it was just a freak accident. I hit a stone and it threw me over the bars and as it threw me over the bars I landed on my feet straight and my hips came through my pelvis. Sorry. I was in hospital for four months. After the successful surgery I uh, threw a fatty cell embolism to the brain. So it stopped all oxygen going to the brain and I went into a it's like a coma for seven days okay. and um, yeah, the recovery was unbelievable. I woke up seven days later with a bypass machine breathing for me and all this from a freak accident, you know. But all of a sudden you go, sure, you know, is this the end for me? Yeah, I woke up and I thought the worst. I thought I will never walk again. Uh, you know, I'd lost all feeling, I couldn't move my legs. Um, it puts you in a bit of a depression. How, how did you now then decide and who did you call on or people who came there and said, well, listen, he has a Zimmer frame or... It was four months that we were on our back, you know, having to go through the whole process. Uh, my wife was a, a big part of my life during that and so was my brother. My mom, you know, once again, like a family, family drove me to it. But it was my desire to go race. Funny enough, you know, while I was down, my dad's car packed up. My dad approached me and uh, I love him dearly and he said, son, would you mind if I drove your car while well, you couldn't race? And I said, don't get used to it because I'm coming back. I'm, <laughs> brilliant, I'm brilliant. I'm coming back to drive my car. I want to come back and I want to win the championship. I, I want to drive my car. And my dad's, you know, I think that was my motivation more than anything. You know, my brother, while I was still in hospital, went and bought me a brand new bike, off-road bike. And he oh, said, wow. while we're waiting for you to recover, this will be parked in your garage and the first opportunity you get to ride it, we go and ride it. It's an incredible story for people who, who might sit there and want to give up. 
on, on life. I would never let them. You know, they have to sit back and think, yes, we're going through a hard time. It's difficult now, but no one knows what the future holds. And you've got to live every day like as if it was your last. And that's it. That was my drive. I was, I will get up tomorrow. I will go and race my car. I will ride bikes. There's a saying that I've had for a while, and I'm not too sure where it came from, but the closer to death you are, the more alive you feel. And, uh, you know, I kind of live by that. And uh, it's something with my cousin as well, you know, we've got a saying as well, you've got to be positive. Everything's got to be positive. You've got to have that drive to go forward. You've got to have the will to go forward. You know, I had to do it for me. I had to do it for my family. I had to do it for my kids. More importantly, I had to do it to win the championship. So <laughs> that was it. And I wanted my car back. I had to drive my car. That's it, I think. You know, my message to people is just don't give up. You know, the worst thing in life is you can fail and somebody can say no. And I tell you, that's as bad as it gets. It's actually not that bad. Exactly, 100%.